now in its ninth year. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hello, everybody. This is Alex. This is the Ramble, and we go until midnight tonight from that city you see below you, New York. Uh, here I am. I'm on vacation. You are, you look so tropical. That's Lori Thompson, ladies and gentlemen. And we do two of these at a time. And what she does is she goes out and changes <laughs> for the second one. Is that a whole new thing you put? What did you put over you? Is that new? No, I just changed. I actually have them laid out. And so, you know, my outfit's laid out. And mm-hmm. so this is just a, a different color. Oh, I so, think I have too much green when oh, I look at so my you, lawn. So you have your costumes ready for, for you. I do. What is it? Cosplaying? Yeah. yeah. And I decided that I would suddenly go on vacation. Actually, I'm still in Florida, but I'm down the coast. See, we're, we're um, see. yeah, we are in simpatico. Yeah. yeah. Um, because the, the coast is being inundated right now. There's the season. Man, which means 98 is cold. Well, this is one of the standard backgrounds for Zoom. You even have it with Zoom. It comes with Zoom as a background. Now, I, I was tempted to do that, but it seemed like I would like to do my own. They would be more genuine. Well, you know, if you are, okay, um, feel that this is not is too warm. It's getting, oh, it's getting hot here. Uh, let's go up to, let's go up north a little bit here we here we go let's go up north there we are okay, okay. let's yeah ah, ooh, let's go cold. to the, ooh. let's go oh. to Reykjavik huh yeah. <laughs> let's go to Reykjavik I've heard good things about it <laughs> yeah uh, also here here's here's my nighttime I used to have this going I used to use that, this that is, actually that looks more like Los Angeles than no, that's that's, I, that's New York I know but I'm just saying as, as a like novice. Don't say that to New Yorkers. I know. Not, it's anathema. Not, nothing looks like L.A. Well, Don't anyway, back to my apartment. Wait a minute. Yes. There we go. See, that's more you, Ben. Yeah. That's, yeah. Let's work yeah. with it. But I figured as long as you were going to change your, your outfit, I would go get another shirt. Yeah, I have one of those rolling things, you know, that pretentious newsrooms have. Oh, speaking of which. Have you watched the Stormy Daniels? I listened to it. Well, I this, don't is, this is now a couple of weeks after the Stormy Daniels thing. So when we talk about it, this is all we know at this point. Which is kind of pivotal. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think it made the whole trial worth it. Oh, totally. Totally. It's like Stormy's on. Oh, my gosh. My shower's better already. <laughs> Your Honor, we do not want her to discuss his penis. What have you Except said? on Kimmel. By the way, I got to tell you something. Yeah, they, Kimmel said, just go to this episode of my show and you can see what she says about his penis. The mushroom. The mushroom. <laughs> yeah, but um, it, 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 uh, if I remember correctly, correct me if I'm wrong, during the whole crap that you know Clinton went through with Monica Lewinsky and so on and so forth. Great documentary. Wasn't there a description of his penis there? That was given I did out not, legally. I, in, I've watched twice in the depositions Clinton. by her. There is a deposition in which she states what his penis looked like and that it was curved. They look like the Amazon logo, you know. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> the Nike swoosh. <laughs> yeah. Enough said. <laughs> no, but um, so a president, he said, "Oh, it's unheard of," you know. Uh, by the way, I'm I'm a little bit out of sync here. Let me see here. Can I change that at all? Is that Do possible? What you must. Is that possible? Can I change that by going to another thing here? If I were to go here, see, I change it. Oops, you t- there we no. go. It shouldn't have gone like that, but it went like that. And I think now we're fine. Yeah, okay. As we're long, fine. As long as I'm, you know. <laughs> fine. It's yeah. a four-letter word. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. As long as I'm fine, that's all that matters. Uh, let me just uh, do something here, however. 
Um, okay, I shan't stand in your way because uh, I'm see. miles oh, away. I lost your name. I can't do oh my gosh! Name. Thank goodness oh, for my is. Here it is. I can, I can, I can put your name up here. Although Where's I, my passport? Huh? Although oh I have no, to, I was just joking I, I about the name. I have to change something a little bit. I have to bring it down. Uh, bring it down. Yeah, bring the name. Let down. it ride. Yeah. Hold on a second. And, Wait a minute. That's not what I. Want. Speaking okay. of let it ride, which is a betting term of which I was not apprised. Have you seen the movie Saint Vincent? It's streaming with Bill Murray as a kind of degenerate gambler. Oh, that has, and, that's an old movie. I know, I just discovered and I thought it was so heartwarming. Yeah, I, I think it was, a, a, I, can't, I can't remember the movie exactly, but I remember that I liked it. Yeah, yeah. it was good. Yeah. St. Vincent, okay. one of the recommendations. All right, but I think I've got the saying, picture all right now where I'm a little more in sync than I was. I'm glad, yeah. Yeah. In sync. Was what? Justin Timberlake a member of NSYNC, or was it Backstreet Boys? I, I never can remember. I really don't know what. Anyway, <laughs> but I'm, you're I'm, NSYNC. I'm sorry, folks. I'm just playing around with the pictures so I don't get as uh, out of sync as I was. Boy, am I being, am I being boring today, or what? No, gosh, no, no. I was just thinking of my confusion involving boy bands because hmm. they came a little after my time to be involved in boy bands and oh, i never, I, never I, I would believe me I, when i was a kid we didn't even have stuff that was aimed at kids or teenagers except the mickey mouse club no for kids well no that was later i was in my That's teens Ses when the mickey mouse club came out now i remember sesame street oh really yeah yeah so you had when nothing? i was what a kid when i was a kid i listened to radio and we had like yes. let's pretend was a saturday morning show we had a, some of the kids' shows. The Lone Ranger was kind of a kids' show. Yeah. You know? uh, uh, I'm trying to think of what other shows there were. There were a lot of there were a lot of detective shows, but those were for adults. But I listened to those too. You know. Yeah, because you had an adult sensibility, yeah. I would guess, from my child. And there was one show. The one show that had my, an influence over me more than yeah. any other was a show that was on Sunday, NBC in the dying days of radio decided we're going to resuscitate radio with a big show that we're going to do on Sundays. So they did a show, and appropriately enough, it was called The Big Show. It was, <laughs> an, it was an hour and a half, and it starred Tallulah Bankhead. And it was a variety Ooh. show. And then they would, at the beginning, the, there were a whole bunch of people who would say, Hi, I'm Jerry Lewis. Hi, I'm Dean Martin. Hi, I'm Dorothy L'Amour. Hi, I'm Bob Hope. You know, and this is the big show, and they're all on the show that week. That's cool. That, that drawing power. And they power. had this theme that was done by Meredith Wilson, who later on went on to do the uh, Music Man. Music Man, yeah. Uh, and it was this big theme. It was this, I, I wanted, I always in my life, I wanted a theme like that, you know. <laughs> da, 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 It's the big show, da, 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 da. <laughs> I mean, I, I wish I had, if I was prepared for this, I could actually have had the audio for it so you could hear it. But anyway, that influenced more than anything else my view of what radio should be. It should be big. And that's why yeah. that's why I did those Christmas shows at, out of the Fairmont Hotel with a full orchestra and everything else, right? Yeah. Because it that was, was awesome. my big show. Yeah. Honey, I mean, sorry. Yes, um, darling. <laughs> You're too used to talking to your other. husband. Do you call him honey? Yeah. <laughs> I do. I call him honey. I call him sweetheart. I call him babe. Yeah. But babe usually on text. I call my but, my wife bitch. It's it's a it's, oh. it's a, 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 a <laughs> loving it. loving term. <laughs> right. Well, when every when it, things are couched with affection, you know yeah. anything yeah. can be loving. Yeah. But uh, yeah, those were great. I mean, those broadcasts because they were. They made you. I always like felt the the fervor of the 1940s at those supper with Schwartzman. Yeah, well, that's exactly and, what they were. They were my kind of radio. That was the kind of radio I always dreamed of doing. It so was if, awesome. If there was anything I did, folks, if you listen to me in San Francisco, that was the sum total of everything I believed radio could be. It was those shows, the the punchline shows in the mornings and so on, the breakfast with Bennett's. Slightly different, not as big, 
I like the big with the orchestra, you know, and the whole thing. This was the those were the show light, um, but yeah, with the orchestra and the whole business, you felt like you were kind of transported. And the into, station, the station loved doing them too. Yeah, you know, uh, they were a blast. Uh, it's it costs a lot of money, but they also got a lot of advertisers to go the freight on it. So, you know, it worked out okay. And I was talking with uh, Ed Cramp. We did some stuff with Ed. And Great we, general we manager. We talked about the time he almost killed our advertisers. Well, that was probably not a good date for him. <laughs> no, where he brought advertisers up from L.A. to see the show. Yes. Yeah. You know, the breakfast, the supper with Schwarzman. That was a gamble. <laughs> yeah, but he put him on a, a plane flight that was eventually hijacked and then they crashed into the into the ground. But so the it turns out that they had to move everybody to a flight right after it or before it because it wouldn't get them there in time. They had to put them on a flight earlier. So they moved them all to an earlier flight. If they had all been on that flight, we would have killed all our advertisers. <laughs> Which in radio is like the kiss of death. But then the guy hijacked the plane and had him drive it into the into the uh, you know. My goodness. Well, see, and so now you're associated with a wonderful event in their life. The time that we avoided being, you know, turned I saved into their fun. lives. Yes, you did. You did. Boy, <laughs> I'm that, the reason you're living. I'm the reason you have grandchildren. He said that was a scary thing for him. My goodness. Yeah. To me, it's scarier almost because I. I don't fear death at all, um, but then to have just missed a flight that crashed, than to be on the flight that crashed. I well, mean, you know, I've, I've I've crashed in a plane. Uh, uh, you remember that? Uh, who was that uh, the news guy? Uh, Bill Haman. Okay. Bill Haman. You remember? Bill oh, Haman? oh, the guy that Oakland wrote Tribune. for the um, right. The, yeah, the East Bay paper. So he one day he calls me up and he goes, Alex, I just got my pilot's license. Why don't I meet you out of Hobby Airport out in uh, Petaluma? I'll pick you up there with a. We'll get in a plane. And we'll go over to like Tracy or someplace like that. We'll have lunch. Sounds get fun. The, get back in the plane and come back. I went. Okay, sure. The charms of the valley. Yeah. Right. I've I've been in private. You know, in in small planes before, I really like them. They're a great way to fly because you fun. really feel like you're flying. You really feel like a bird in one of those smaller planes. <laughs> you know, you're more in touch with the experience. Only only birds don't crash. Okay, um, <laughs> theoretically, windshield. So anyway, we go out and we have our lunch. We come back, and as we're landing at Hobby, is it was it Hobby? I don't know if that was the name. Hobby is in Dallas. Anyway, think, this but. was the airport, by the way, in Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, where he takes off in the airplane and leaves. They okay. use that airport. But anyway, it yeah. has a. It's famous for a wind shear. That it's a very difficult. If if you're not a great a great pilot, it's a difficult landing. Okay. So or if you're he, a but he doesn't yeah. know that, and he comes in, blah, 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 boom, and. Uh, as we're going in, he hits the wind shear. And now what he should do, if you're an experienced pilot, is you just gun it and take it off again and come back and give another attempt and come in and land. But he didn't. He tried to land it. And the wind shear pulled us off. We landed, came off of the runway, onto the strip of grass between the runway, over to another runway, across that <laughs> runway, into, you jumped the meridian and then into the grass, which was in a ditch, and we stopped. Was your heart just going crazy? And we're like, you know, the plane's like this, right? And I'm like, I'm like sitting in the plane, going, I should open the door and get out of here, <laughs> but I don't know if my legs are going to work anymore because most of the engine was now in the cabin of the plane. Oh because my. the propeller had hit and then pushed it back. No airbags? <laughs> I don't think so. No, just seat belts. Yeah. <laughs> and no finally, I see all these people coming running over me. And I open, I figure, to hell with it. If I can't walk, I can't walk. I push the door open. 
and I got out and I was fine and and I had a, some couple of bruises on me uh, and uh, Bill was okay too but he had some bruises on him he got out of his side of the plane and I said well thanks for the ride you know this is really, really <laughs> how much do I owe you <laughs> well now I figure I'm safe for the rest of my life yeah that that's how a many good times, play. how many times I'm still out of sync now, folks. I'm sorry. How many times can I uh, have this happen to me? You know, it's impossible. I would think you're, yeah, that's check yeah. off. If I've had a, been in a plane crash, what are the chances of ever being in a plane crash again? <laughs> so I figured I'd start renting myself out to people who were afraid of flying. I think that's a great idea. You know, insurance. And, I, and then I thought that's I'd just get a insurance. whole bunch of people who in plane crashes and we'd hire them out to fly with people places next to them so it won't crash i think it's a great idea yeah. because people love testimonials and yeah. you've got a great one. you don't remember that story it happened while i was yeah i, I know I, it rings a bell now because I, I like bill you know and he would be on the show and i always thought he was a, a succinct writer yeah for oh, the the tribune was it the open yeah. tribune yeah yeah so, so uh, anyway, cool. you know, that was my uh, little uh, uh, attempt with face. That, uh, that, there was a close to death experience, a near death experience. Right. So on those New York Times checklist, have you ever, you know, visited uh, Dollywood? Maybe you can't check that one, but you can check. I was in a plane crash. I was in a plane crash. Yeah. 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 That's a bucket list you don't want to really hold well i i'd rather not have been in a plane crash but you know that's fine with me you know it's good at parties you know yeah. you can brag about it and have you ever had a near-death experience you know not that i know of in retrospect sometimes i think that could have gone woefully wrong but not really i kind of think ahead to uh what could possibly go wrong i'm an oldest child so it's just like, what about this is inadvisable? And how will you handle it if it does happen? Yeah. And so I'm, I'm kind of, you know, but by then, but on the other hand, you know, I, I pretty much flirt with danger if it presents mm -hmm. itself. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah. you've got a real coup there, yeah. you know, with the plane crash. Mm -hmm. You That's your trump card. You know, it when is. a party gets dull, hey, did you hear about my plane crash? Do you ever talk to Bill Mann? No, I haven't in years. No. Really? No. Because no. I think of him, and sometimes you think, oh, internet. It'll be so easy to find people that, you know, just pass your mind that you appreciate her for one reason well, or another. Well, he and I had a falling out, and I can't remember what it was over. Something well, probably imaginary on his part. Yeah. Well, friendships, you know, are subject to sensitivities. Well, there are friend. There, it, it, can you call it a friendship if it didn't last? You know? See, that's my that's my thing. Continuity. You and I have a friendship. There's no we question do. in my mind about it. I mean, how many times have we been with each other? You know? Yeah. Well, I mean, we. It's established to me that is established, and I savor that. It's in my. Mm -hmm. Our friendship is my safety deposit box. Yeah. No. No. And and I'm I I appreciate it. You know. It's funny, I was talking to, to uh, Ed Cramp the other day, our general manager. BK. Yeah. And he, the guy who's fired me twice, and I still talk to him. Cause yeah. That's because he's a lovely person. Yes, and, he is. And, 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 I, and I was talking with him, and I, I was thinking, you know, here I am. I'm talking to Ed Cramp all these years later. That's friendship. That is friendship, Ben, and that's a, a capacity to forgive and go on. And to just accept the I fact have, that we're I all have, human. I have Chuck Farnham on here occasionally. Yeah. And and this is a guy I didn't talk to for 30 years. Really? I didn't because we, we were kind of mad at each other. Yeah, uh, I've realized when I'm mad at someone, it's probably me. I had better just get over it. Well, no, I also, at this age, I come to the point about there's no sense in being mad at somebody forever. Well, I you mean, know. resentment will eat you up well, more yeah, than anything. Yeah, yeah. I, but believe me, I didn't spend my days going, boy, do I resent Chuck Farnham for 30 years. No, no. No, no it's more subliminal you know, than that. But when he, when he finally came back into my life, I was willing to t talk to him and get to be friends with him again. Well, sure. And so that's a friendship that has lasted. 
Exactly. It's just all about moving on, forgiving, and not sweating the small stuff. And the fact that we're all human. And I figure I really the do. number one friendship that I have is Marjorie, because in spite of all my crap, she's never left me. See? But she's we a keeper. Do have, we do have a saying, you've never left me. Yeah, but where was I going to go? <laughs> well, that's... <laughs> At our age, it's, you know, come on, you know. What, we're going to get divorced? I remember, do you remember Yume Cronin and Jessica Tandy? They were... Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Wonderful they actors. were like one of the longest, um, most loyal marriages in Hollywood. Yes, yes, they were on sixty minutes once being interviewed. This is like in the in the twilight of their years. You know, they were both about seventy or eighty, something like seventy-five <laughs> or eighty. And they said, "Now that we're on sixty minutes, we, we we have a major announcement to make." And he, I think it was Mike Wallace, was interviewing him. Said, "Well, what's the announcement?" She says. Uh, Jessica and I have decided to get divorced. <laughs> what did Wallace and, say? And, and he didn't. He was gobsmacked. He didn't know what to <laughs> say. And he went, "What? Really? Really?" And they went, "No." <laughs> you know, Come no. on. Yeah. But, I mean, it, 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 at this age, why would you get divorced? I don't know. And also, I didn't even get married until I was in my 60s. And I thought, you know, okay, I can handle myself to be accepting and to be kind, compassionate, forgiveness, and, uh, and I can do it. But when you get into marriage, you realize that um, you're not as equipped as you thought, or I realized I was not as equipped as I thought. And it means so much more than what I thought. Well, marriage is, is the toughest thing you can enter into. I agree. It's also the easiest thing to enter into because you only have to was, remember one principal rule. Ready? Ready? Be ready to forgive at all times. That is great advice. The That's best survival book. of a marriage is based on forgiveness. That is it. That because really is it. The person you're living with, I'm shot, sorry, is going to do enough to piss you off. <laughs> you know, and every you day. Just, you've got to be able to forgive all that. You know? And this and, and includes, even if he, if he goes out and cheats on you, you got to learn how to forgive that. Yeah, I mean, even physical infidelity at this stage, you know, what would it mean? It wouldn't mean a lot. It well, would you know, mean, I mean, Marjorie doesn't have to worry about it because with all the prostate stuff they did on me, it doesn't <laughs> really respond well. Well, and it's a nice know, way of putting putting it nicely. Yeah. Well, and one would think. I mean, I know my mind, and to think that I would physically cheat is so. I mean, it's oh, a there's myth. no way I'm going to cheat now, but I I can't I, I haven't got the equipment to do it with, so you know. Well, and, and I I do I guess, but um, you know I I would I wouldn't even think of it, and and the fact that in my spouse that would ever be a concern is hilarious to me. Mm -hmm. But if it's not hilarious to them, you have to be compassionate and hear them out. Mm -hmm. which right. is so uh, uh, we got a couple of minutes left here. Uh, it, it, you know, I, you sound like everything's gone okay with your marriage. I mean, I'm sure it's not perfect. None, none of them are. It's a good marriage. Um, he's a good spouse. He's thoughtful. He's, um, he's a little hyper, you know, which I'm like a little OCD. I'm not used to that happening, mm -hmm. but, um, I mean, I, I dealt with it myself in high school and junior high, but I got counseling and, uh, that because I'm a real absorber. So if someone is stressed, if someone is angry, if someone is, you know, freaked out, I will, like we're in Buenos Aires and my husband is the ultimate planner. Everything goes right when we're on a trip and everything is confirmed. Oh, good. I and, need somebody like that too. I know, I love that about it. But we get off the plane and there was one aspect, I mean, from the plane to the hotel, a lot of things can go wrong. And he's thought about them all. And then there well, was no, one. No, I, I, again, you know, I'm going back to, uh, what's his name? We did uh, Swimming to Cambodia. Uh, uh, Spalding Gray. Spalding Gray, who on my show, I told him I was like that. You know, I worried about every, 
He says, you know, he says, I'm the same way. He says, you know why? And I said, why? He said, we're control freaks. Yeah. We can't, we, yeah. we, we think of every possibility of what could go wrong. So when yeah. it does, we're not surprised. We have control over it. But the things that throw you are things that you didn't think of. Yeah, but it has a negative side because before I'd ever go on a, a trip, I would always get depressed the day before. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, just um, stress, depressed, or just sad? Uh, uh, depressed. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, because you're afraid. Thinking Is it of all the things that could go wrong. Yeah. Because you were you concerned that it would reflect on your character? No, I'm, I was afraid that something would have power over me because I didn't see it coming. I know, Ben. And that's the big uh, myth. Yeah. That, that we've thought of everything that can hit. Every possible thing that could go wrong. That's why every time I come down with something and I go to a doctor, the first question I ask him is, is this going to kill me? I know. Really? <laughs> Really? I know you do. And I've had more than one doctor look at me and go, no. No. Like, you moron, no. <laughs> when I had the prostate thing, I asked the doctor, I said, is this what's going to kill me? And they went, no. And you know what kills you? Life. <laughs> I, I'm, you know, it's like my father said, I, he says, I hope when I die, I get hit by a Mack truck. You know, just, just really <laughs> fast. A, boom. Mac. Can be Adele. <laughs> hey, we've run out of time. Excuse me, folks, if the picture every now and then has kind of changed and flipped and flopped because I was trying to get it so that we were somehow in sync here because I don't know what it is. I'm, I'm getting new equipment. I'm going to get new equipment soon uh, of a more even more powerful machine that might stop this from going out the of sinky, sync. The sinky out of sinky. Yeah, the stinky, sinky oh. thing. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, hey, listen, you know how much I love you. And I want you to know that. And how much I appreciate the fact that you talk with us every week. You know, it's a, it's food. It's, yeah. It's, uh, it's vitamin. Do you look forward to this? Oh, completely, Ben. Oh, really? Completely. Okay, Are good. you kidding? I just yeah. wanted to know it wasn't annoying for you. No, it keeps me waking up. <laughs> we run over, but to hell with it. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Lori Thompson. Yay! Later, baby. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Well, okay. All righty. There is a Lori Thompson. I noticed, I don't think I had my light on there. Did I? I was looking rather pale. Anyway, how are you, everybody? Uh, it's um, it's, uh, it's uh, Wednesday. First day of our, our uh, work week. Which goes until Friday, but uh, anyway, uh, anyway, I I don't have much to talk about, but I do know some people who probably have something to talk about, and we will bring them in now. Here they come, ladies and gentlemen. It is our Zoom panel. Uh, Charlie Wallace and uh, is here, and uh, Brian Neary is here, and uh, you could use a little more light in there, Brian. Yeah, and uh, and Josh uh, Wheeler. Hello, Josh. How are you? Good. How you doing? Good. And here comes Scott Boddicker, and here comes uh, Jeff Stein. Okay, so we're. Why is it so dark where you are, uh, Brian? Brian. Huh? I I told you I, I can't use my work uh, my work laptop right now because they sort of uh, canceled Zoom because everybody's going to Teams so. I don't know. Yeah. I got to figure yeah. something out. Yeah. How's okay. how's this? Is that better? Oh, oh. <laughs> I look white, really white. Yeah, yeah. So you guys are talking about being faithful. It's like uh, Chris Rock. Chris Rock says the man is only as faithful as his options. So when you get older, you don't have any more options. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very Who said that? Chris Rock. He, he, he's right. He's right. Yeah. He's talking about uh, Clinton. Only as faithful as his options. Okay, I'll go along with that. Hello, uh, Hello. Josh. How are you? Bye. We got you on a Monday. Today's Monday? Uh, Excuse me, yeah. Wednesday. Wednesday. <laughs> now you're really getting screwed up. Yeah, we had quite a Monday show to this week. 
we had 18 people, right? We had 18 Eight. people. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, I can imagine. Mandy wasn't even there. Oh, sorry. What'd you say? I Mandy said I can imagine like. There. We could have had 19. <laughs> yeah. Mandy. Two ways, two ways to lose track of what day it is, is probably, I, I assume to probably be retired, you know, because you don't care or to work 12 hour nights yeah, and not on a set schedule, one that rotates around. You never have any idea what day it is. You only know if you work that day or if you don't. Yeah. I've gotten to the point where I just, uh, you know, I'm, I'm tired all the time and I think it's because I don't have a job. Well, you know, possible. I have this, but this isn't a job, you know. This is the best job you ever had. Yeah. Well, in in some ways, but, you know, it's not <laughs> the same as having a job. Yeah. You know, it, it this is kind of voluntary. And it'd be nice if we had a job, you know, and uh, something mm -hmm. I had to go to every day. You yeah. Know? And quite frankly, that I had to like take a car down to go to the station to do it, you know. But anyway, at 84, I don't think anybody's in going to be hiring me for much of anything. Okay, so yeah, you never know. Yeah, y you never Walmart. know. Well, I don't know. You know, I uh, I have a friend uh, uh, who does a show nationally, uh, and he asked me to do his show uh, i think it was maybe last saturday or something like it, last sunday and it's a three-hour show and i initially i said okay i'll do it you know and then i thought about it i went it exhausts me to do an hour now you know to do three hours and and all i have are callers i don't have people somebody you know it just, it, I, so I, I told him, look, I just don't think I can do it anymore. You know, it's just, I'm not ready to put in that kind of commitment. And I want to do the best possible show I can. I don't want to go on and have people say, oh, I heard Alex Bennett last night on uh, so-and-so's show. Boy, has he started to suck. You know? <laughs> yeah, the first hour was medical. The second hour was... The travel and the third hour you were taking calls. What do you mean? I don't get you. But but is there is there supposed to be a producer with you? I don't know. I think I have some kind of a producer. Yeah. Mm. Not me. Yeah. That, yeah there was calls somebody stuff, right? who was a producer. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, some some guy was just asking on the chat if this is Alex Bennett from Sirius, and then he said, "I thought he was dead." <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Well, uh, can I say... Oh, Mark, he's not dead. Ain't. Wait a minute. <laughs> no, a lot of people thought he was dead, but he ain't. That's 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 John Redshaw. He's uh, right yeah, no. yeah, but the guy above him, the Mark. Oh, I see. Um, is this the Alex Bennett that used to be on Sirius Radio on the Progressive Channel? And John Redshaw goes, yes. And Mark go, writes back, I thought he was dead. <laughs> <laughs> I know you'd like that. Yeah. And uh, no, Mark, I'm not dead. But if more people do what you just did, I probably will become so. so yeah. Alex Bennett is still alive. Alex yeah. Bennett yes, is still exactly. alive. Yeah. No, I'm I'm not dead yet. But it's you know, <laughs> who knows, you know. But anyway, so. Uh, but I'm trying to wake up tonight. I'm drinking some coffee, and you know, I don't sound tired, do I? Nope. No, not at all. Let me see here. <clears throat> so, uh, um, hello, Scott. Gosh, he Whoa. hasn't called the show in a long time. This well, show. he told me to call in yeah, on Monday, so I did. You here. I'm awake. Once. I, yes. Not outside a bar at night. Yeah. Are you still doing? Are you still drinking a lot? No, no, quit drinking. You quit drinking. Oh my Bravo god! Bravo for you. Bravo for you. <clears throat> god, you're gonna be so boring now. That's that's my life. Well, you know, the thing is that uh, I uh, I've never been a drinker. This strange as it may seem, 
lot of drugs, but no drinking. You're absolutely yep. correct, my friend. <laughs> a lot of drugs, but no drinking. Hi, I'm Nicole Hockley from Sandy Hook Prom. What? What? Nothing. That was me. I was going to your uh, uh, YouTube, and it, she started talking before I could hit the mute button. Oh. I wanted to read the chats. Oh, you want to read the chat? Yeah, I wanted to see what, see if you're still alive. Yeah. <laughs> Let me see, Mark from Anirondack Mountains, upstate New York. Yeah, we're well, good, man. No, that's that explains why you think I'm dead. Yeah. The world does not get to the Adirondacks. So, <laughs> yeah. So, anyway. So, anyway, Josh, uh, to what do we owe this privilege of you being here tonight? Is it that you're not working tomorrow? Uh, yeah, I'm off tonight and I'm off tomorrow night. Oh, really? No. Oh, cool. Cool. Two weeks uh, ago, he was on Wednesday and Thursday, I think. What did yeah. you say? Two weeks ago, he was on Wednesday and Thursday. Yeah, yeah I'd be yeah. like that every other week. Yeah. So I can't call Friday because I work the weekend. Uh, then I got a few days off where you're not on the air. And then next week, but I'll be able to call Friday night next week. Oh, okay. Well, I, I, hopefully this week, we should be able to do something Saturday. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. Those people whose names we won't name because I don't want to offend them, let us down this Saturday. They know who they are. <laughs> Kevin and Patrick. <laughs> Kevin and Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> I know who one is. Well, you see, I'm, More I'm, important. I'm always available because I have no life. Well, that's me too, you know. Yeah. So. But I'm only good for about an hour. <laughs> then I start getting tired, you know. Uh, no, we get together on the weekends and we get together into the four of us um and uh, we talk about you guys and how terrible you are so oh god i thought you were going to tell us like, like you got together in a hot tub uh, <laughs> that too yeah that too there you go yeah this, oh it, it's well there's almost, kevin so all the shit that i just said about him that that was wrong see what we've done is we've got this little thing where we all sit and we just talk with each other that's it you know and what are we doing uh, um I think you kind of started it, Josh, and then I just joined it, what, about a year ago or something like that? Uh, it's probably been longer than that. I used to talk to Patrick a lot, and then Kevin started talking with us. It was kind and of a little you... show you created for yourself. Yeah, sure. But it wasn't broadcast that, like, anywhere. It wasn't pretty stupid, out. so I wouldn't call it that. It wasn't, wasn't put out anywhere. But, you know, I uh, one a time I mentioned, hey, you know, all I got to do is flick a little button here on, on uh, Zoom, and I can have us all on, for instance, Facebook Live. And we decided no, because we just want to have the freedom to really talk about anything we want to talk about. <laughs> Occasionally having... I say things on there that would get uh, me fired from my job probably. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, yeah. So we don't, we don't broadcast this thing. It's not that it's dirty or anything. It's no, just politically, it's, just, yeah. it's positions some people will not take, okay? And we take them. And <laughs> Kevin's one of them and the other one's uh, Patrick. And that's it. It's four people. Uh, what, you don't invite Phil Meyer? <laughs> Are you crazy? No. I haven't heard from Sarcastic, Phil. Sarcastic, yes. Crazy, I, I just no. realized today, I haven't heard from Phil in a long time. I, I was going to ask, is Phil still alive? I mean, well, wait a minute. Let's ask, uh, let's ask Mark. <laughs> call back to Alex. Dad, you dead, might think so. he's dead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You could get a little moped and go around and deliver food like Kevin does. Make pretty good money. You know, mm -hmm. drive around New York City. Yeah. Kevin does that. He makes pretty good money. Yeah. Sort of. Do you make good money? Do you make good money doing that? Uh, what is it? Uh, what's the? I wouldn't uh, call it good. No. Who is it you do it for? DoorDash. DoorDash. Um, um, I it's mean, it's fun little side money. That's all it is. Well, you make about fifty bucks a night. It's different all nights. I made a thousand bucks last week. What? what? Yeah. What? I mean, I made almost five hundred bucks one what week. Six hundred bucks? No, nine hundred bucks one week. You know, it's good and it's bad sometimes. Well, yeah. How did it become a thousand dollar week? 
I'll work my ass off. <laughs> really? I mean, did you get any extraordinary tips or anything like that? Yeah. I got one delivery. It was like a $56 tip. Really? Well, you're How welcome. Who did they order? They ordered about 40 bucks worth of stuff. And I had to take it out to the back hills. And they, Some they company came... ordered food for their fam- or, I mean, for their employees, and I brought it out to him, and he paid well. But you say it was only $40? Yeah, it was about 40 bucks worth of food and $56 tip. Wow. wow. <clears throat> yeah, he was I mean, very nice. I try to catch him on Fridays, <laughs> just before <laughs> noon. <laughs> yeah, just before noon. Wow. And so does everybody else. I mean, that's hmm. places I work. You know, now does that. My last place did does that a lot. I mean, they call and order 15 pizzas or whatever. And, I mean, for the delivery guy, it's, you just make two trips in and out of the building, carry these pizzas out, take them over. But, I mean, that's $400 worth of food or whatever. And all these corporate cards, you can leave 20% and the company won't say anything. So, they yep. give the driver, you know, fucking 80 bucks or something like that. Yeah. I mean, so, yeah, our, our factory bad. in... Our factory in Lodi, <clears throat> there's a there's a little deli a block uh, on the same block actually that that we just leveled two two training facilities and we built this huge building and now we have like uh, 1,200 employees there yeah. and yeah. there's a little deli that just sold just as we were building and the guy who owns it now is like he's he's got it made because we keep getting stuff from him so they keep catering all of our meetings yeah. and, and I should have yeah. bought it. I used to, I, when I ordered from, you know, for my employees, I only had, what, uh, 10 employees, but I bought everybody food, and I I was generous with the driver or whoever brought it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, I mean, he, right in the guidelines of the cards I always had, I mean, it said, you know. Yeah. You could leave, you know, it was up 22%. to 22%. It was up to your discretion, really, you could leave whatever you want, as long as the upper management approves it. But it said, you know, 20% is the recommended and it's perfectly fine. Yeah. It said, you go get $100 worth of pizza or, or have it delivered and give the driver a $20 tip. No one says a word. Yeah. 20 to 25% is what they always suggested. Right. How much are they saying now? 20, 25%. Was I mean, what, I was when I was working six years ago, eight I, years ago, no, I always nine years ago now. The 20% <laughs> was a normal tip. You know, yeah, yeah, or a waiter or a waitress, right? right? Yeah, but this guy's picking it up, he's bringing well, it no, to the guy you. Who, the person who delivers, stuff. I give the same kind of tip I would give a waiter or a waitress, yeah, yeah so do absolutely. I. But you know, some of the places I've been in, they you know, they got to carry two or three trips in, and you know, it's kind of a pain in the ass. I got to go to the guard shack and call in and wait for him to call. So, you know, it's not really hard, it's just a bit of a hassle. You know, when it's all done, I've seen him give the driver a hundred bucks, no problem, yeah. I mean, it's not that bad, you know. Well, uh, I we use Instacart, you know, and uh, when they deliver, when I get it from Costco, I give them. I don't give them twenty percent. I give them. I give them always twenty dollars, because yeah. that's what a cab would cost me to go down there, and then a cab would cost me to come back. So I figure that's the tip I give to them. Fair. Plus, I assume they make a certain amount of money off each delivery, too, yeah, from, they do. Uh, from Instacart. I don't know what the deal is. Yeah. Well, you would see that on your, on your bill. On the bill. What, what they pay them? Yeah, you would see what you get charged, and then they get a portion of that somewhere along the line. Yeah. There's a percentage. I don't know how they work. It's by the mile. I mean, we see, we see what they pay us, which, There's you know, the that's what you they're just the say, delivery what, charge, and it's just a portion of what they're charging the customer. I don't know how much it goes And we to get the, the uh, tip, and we don't even see the tip until it's over with. Right. That's what I always get. Sometimes them. I'll go in and shop for 10 items at Lucky's and then come out, deliver it, you know, and it'll say, you know, you're going to get paid 10 bucks for this order plus a tip. Right. And that's all you know. And I'll go in and shop for 10 items, and I'll take it across town, deliver it, and then – finish off the order and it'll say no tip and i get 10 bucks for doing all that mm. no tip. there's that that happens quite often wow so, so you can get screwed too doordash is kind of like instacart right in other words it's the same thing yeah yeah it's mostly food orders but they do 
So next time they, they do they, shopping orders as well. Next yeah. time they order, Kevin, you take their ten items and make it eleven. A pile of dog poo. I started my own little list. Oh, okay, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, called the shit get, list. <laughs> we used to get. Remember the, this one? Know, no, I don't go there no more. The same, the same drivers a lot, you know. And I mean, once they've been there once or twice, and every time they come in there, you give them a hundred dollar tip. They, I mean. They're going to take care of your shit, not mess it up. Yep. Right. Correct. You know I mean, they, they get in there and set it on the table and make sure everything's yep. good. And they know it's like, yeah, I'll, I'll take that. You know, every time I go to SW or AXO or whatever, they give me a hundred yep. bucks. You know, so. Yep. I remember those guys. tip in Ohio is like two or three hundred here. I don't know. I mean, I appreciate everything, but, you know, just some things that just. You know, you get irritated sometimes, but that's the way it is. That's part of the job. Like the little, the area that I live in, I've noticed some of the pizza places and stuff, like they don't even hire their own delivery drivers anymore. They just use them to come bring it. They like, yeah. they said, that's what Little Caesars does. Right. Like we, they can never keep drivers and they never come to work or they quit, you know, unexpectedly. And they said, the hell with it. We won't even, we'll just hire a couple people to work in the kitchen making the pizzas and whatnot. In our delivery window, and every time someone calls in for delivery, I think they just put it on the computer they got with yep. DoorDash or whatever, and that's who brings it to you. Yep. Mm-hmm. So they're just that's like Caesar's they're just does, like using they, that as a service to sublet. Like, they don't have to pay insurance on cars and everything or whatever. I mean, they're just using them almost like any other logistics service. Here's yep. Here's a bid board with all the open jobs we got right now. <laughs> if you want to take one, take it. You don't, you know, go home yep. and watch Alex Bennett on YouTube. <laughs> I mean, I just went out for three, what was it, three hours? Three hours, because I had to take my wife to get her eye surgery today. So I went out for three hours, and I pulled in 71 bucks, 72 bucks. It wasn't bad. While she was having her surgery? No, no, I went up to San Jose and dropped her off and had surgery and then came back and I decided to go to work when she got home. Mm. It was right at dinner time. I mean, I don't think it's like a, a permanent income, but for people who want to make extra money or people like semi-retired or retired and just want to have a little money trickling in, it's probably perfect. You know, There are some guys out here in town that I know that are doing it for permanent income. They go on it. 6 30 in the morning they stay yeah. on they're still out there right now but they're working yeah, I mean, you know, 10 right. 12 hours a day or work like that you know <laughs> that's crazy like, but it's but, probably because i mean it's no benefits and and you know you, you're like responsible to take your own taxes out they're probably just going to 1099 you and all that kind of stuff yep. so it's per, so it's just perfect for extra money if you're smart but you also you can money, write off everything taxes, it's good it's your own business too. You can write off everything. I write off the right. the app that I use for my mileage. I write off my mileage, my fuel, all that stuff. You write all that off. I mean, I, I was talking to a guy today. He says I even write off the clothes that I wear because I got to be comfortable when I do this. And I write off my sneakers. Right. I write off. He writes off everything. And I go okay. I mean, like, and if you're out and about and you bang a porn star and she blackmails you and you have to pay her money not to tell your wife. You can fucking write that off. You can write off the lawyer, too. <laughs> lawyer is right there. Just write it off. <laughs> it's all covered. <laughs> I'll tell yeah. you, when I was doing, when I was doing uh, we would do a, a shows, you know, live um, uh, uh, concerts with comedy concerts, and I would do them. And every time I do them, I'd go out and buy some clothes to wear on stage. Yeah. And we could immediately take that off my taxes the cost mm-hmm. of the clothes and then i could continue to wear them it privately and still it was a tax deduction here's the reason why my lawyer told me not my lawyer my accountant told me it's an old story and i can't remember who got the deal made the case with the government and, and it became law and that was that if you go on stage and you're wearing clothes you use just for that performance, you can never really truthfully wear those again because you're going to sweat in them from the lights on stage and so (laughs) on and so forth. So you can continue to wear those clothes, but they can be taken off as a deduction. So for a long time, I I I had that as a deduction. 
Well, when you're in the union, they got all that stuff too. I mean, it's all in there that you can ride all that stuff down too. Yeah. But um, so anyway, so it sounds like a good little deal you got there. You know, you, yeah, and you can work anytime you want. Yeah. I mean, I just decided I work. You don't. Do like, you find outside that it supplies you with heaven? enough money that that it's it's worth it, or are you just doing it because what else am I going to do in my time? Both. Do you do you deliver outside your city? I know what city you live in. I don't. Yeah, I, I keep in town, but I like to go to Monterey and go down there and drive around Pebble Beach a little bit, and then sometimes I go over to Santa Cruz when it's a nice day and look at the right. beach. And right. I've gone up to San Jose, but I don't like going up there. Yes, yeah. that's quite you a drive like to people, deliver something. <laughs> you like to Both. think that people around there would be able to provide good tips, but you know, I mean. Monterey is good for tips, yeah. Does DoorDash get a lot of business? I mean, they do, yeah. You get a lot of hotel business up in Mo down in Monterey. I, I was going to a lot of hotels down there. Oh, yeah, really? Yeah, definitely. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah, they have the dance conventions and dance competitions, and that's all people do is just order. Yeah. Cool. Well, Uber right. also delivers food now. What? What's that? Uber yeah. also delivers food. Uber yeah, I, I use the Uber app too, but I, I I did both of them the other day, and I got three Uber orders, and compared to my thirteen DoorDash orders. Yeah, I don't think it's as popular. Yet. It's not as popular in certain areas. It's very popular, like up well, in also, San Jose. Also, I talk so to I talk to a lot of these people, a lot of these uh, car drivers, who have they both take Uber and Lyft. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I said, which one is the better of the two? And they said, Lyft. Hmm. Lyft treats their people better. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think eventually they're all going to figure it out and then they're going to merge merge into each other probably. You know, Uber will buy up Lyft or one will buy the other and that kind of thing eventually. We were talking about that today. I think DoorDash will probably buy or Uber Eats will buy DoorDash or something like that, and they'll all kind of merge together and become one, you know, because there's so many of them. You got uh, Grubhub, you got Uber Eats, you got DoorDash, you got all these other ones. And they're eventually all going to kind of, I think, buy each other up like everything else. Well, you know? I mean, Lyft, uh, I, I'm just thinking about Lyft and, um, and, and Uber, and I think the government would not let them merge. Because that would, uh, it doesn't sound right. Okay. Why, why is that different than two taxi companies merging? Because Uber's because bigger a, and Lyft and Lyft is bigger than than uh, a, a little cab company somewhere. And, the, and there's a lot of cab companies where. They but they're all owner Lyft, operators. Lyft, yeah, it's only Lyft and Uber. I don't remember, did. Did, Sir did Sirius and XM have any trouble when they did that deal? I thought they had. The they did, yeah. They had. To, they had to make some concessions. Yeah. I, I'm trying to remember what they were now, but I'm an yeah, old man I'm trying and to I remember forget too. stuff, you know. But I mean, like I, you know, I mean, the yeah, they do make them do that stuff. Uh, I mean, when my company bought Valspar seven or eight years ago, uh, they were forced to divest of five or six other different companies. Right. That they owned that sold brand names that you would know, but you never knew that that's who they were owned. And they had like some floor coverings and things like that and convinced the government that, you know, that got them out of the market share enough to, because, you know, when they, the acquisition of Valspar went through, I mean, that basically gave them almost full control of the consumer market. I mean, it's in all the stores and then they had, they had basically the full allotment that's in Lowe's. Mm -hmm. And they sell most of the stuff that you see at Menards under brand names that you don't know that they own. So, you know, really Home Depot with Bear is the only consumer competition basically in the U.S. I mean, there's some other really small ones like Benjamin Moore and some others, but they're not, mm -hmm. I mean, they're not large or worldwide like that. So, I mean, they do make people divest or whatever of certain uh, I don't really know how they figure it out or formulate it, but it, it does happen. I mean, it is real. Yep. Well, Sirius uh, XM, when they merged, I believe they had to uh, agree that they would not raise their prices to the consumers for something mm -hmm. like five or six years, something like that. Yeah, it might have been. 
Mm. And I, I don't know. That, huh? I don't know how it worked for them, but mm. I mean, obviously looking back on it now, like 20 years or whatever of paying them, I wish I had just taken their lifetime deal for like 500 bucks, like 20 yeah. years. <laughs> you know, I mean, I wonder how many people did that and are actually getting it on, you know, I don't know. I'd love to know that though. Like how many people actually, when they had like, you know, at one time they had that deal, like so they had some kind of lifetime deal. It was like 500 bucks. Like, we're, like we're yeah. supposed to get serious for life, but I don't really know. They how. did have a deal like that, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. And they don't do it anymore. I think uh, yeah. that I know of, but I mean, when they were, I don't know when they debuted. I remember this was maybe like Oh four Oh five. Um, yeah. so probably, you know, 20 years ago. And like I said, they had a deal. Now I'm sure later on they would have been like, nope, that's for one thing and only mm -hmm. one radio and whatever. Yeah. And they would have, but I mean, there's still ways that it would have been, I've I'm like, I've never canceled the service. So that one that I paid, I could have just transferred <laughs> from car to car to car. I probably never would be paying, you know, the monthly payments like I've had to do. Well, if you had a subscription, you had a subscription. Right. And no matter yeah. what platform you used it on or whatever. And if you get a new car and you have a new radio in that car, all you have to do is under your account, just give them the new VIN number. What's the number that they have? That's just some kind of a number. Yeah, I, uh, uh, IMEI yeah, number. Yeah, I think you get a number it. off the radio now, like a DIN number or yeah. Yeah. something yeah. like that. Yeah. And you can give them that <clears> and... I think that's actually, I think you can even do it yourself now on the internet. Yeah, you can. And type it in because you used to not be able to. And like I told you before, you used to call them and it they were very confused. It's like, I want to tell you how cheap these guys yeah. were, though. Uh, <clears throat> when they fired me and Albert, <gasps> okay, <clears throat> uh, my I had a, a Sirius XM membership whatever just because i worked for them right and mine kept going for quite a while man it went for about a year or something like that but with albert he turned in his like keys and his uh, identification card he got in the elevator and by the <laughs> minute he hit the first floor oh shit they had canceled his service that's bullshit wow. Mm. You know, they couldn't say, eh, he worked for us for a long time. He was a loyal right. employee. What's it going to cost us to keep him being able to get it? I got it for about a year, but I never listened to it because I don't want to listen to somebody who fired me. Yeah. You know? So, mm. yeah. But <laughs> yeah. how much does it cost now for Sirius XM? Well, I have. I have a bill right here. Yeah, I have. <laughs> really? I have. Two vehicles with the full package, pretty much everything you can get, and the internet. I, I pay like fifty-four dollars or something a year or a month. A, a month? month? Yeah, yeah, something like that. How about you, Kevin? Uh, I'll tell you right now, I got two vehicles with the full package. Yeah, two seventy-six plus. Three forty nine, and I pay by the year, so it's like six twenty five for two vehicles. Six hundred and twenty five dollars a year. Yep, and yeah. you divide that by twelve. Do you find the service worth it for 52 that? Fifty two bucks a month. Yeah, that's what I pay a month. Yeah, two vehicles and the internet. Yeah, yeah, you yeah find I find it worth it. I don't even listen to regular radio. I mean, yeah, I don't either. Ever. I mean, the I got only one show that I listen is... to on regular radio. Yeah, the only exception is some local. Sport. Yeah, but my question is covered. my question is the same question I have with cable. Okay. Mm. How many of the stations and they I don't know they have what? How many channels? Uh, a lot. A couple of hundred channels. I mean, yeah. Whatever. How many of those do you listen to? Mm. Well, mm. I agree with that. Yeah. I probably listen to at least two. Probably at least forty. You listen Whoa. to 40? That's a, that's a lot. Yeah, because I listen to a lot of hockey, a lot of baseball, oh. a lot of basketball. I listen to that's... a lot of sports. Wow. And then I listen to CNN and all the news stuff. And because then I what they to were supposed to... Oh, one least, of the deals... At least they were, 10 or 20 music stations. One of the deals they were supposed to do 
under that deal with the government was not raise their prices for a certain amount of time and they were supposed to give you a la carte service. In other words, they let's, could really say, screw all, you. let's say all I wanted, because I have bad taste, is Howard Stern. <laughs> I don't want to listen to anything else. You could just buy Howard Stern. Mm-hmm. But they never initiated well, that a la carte yeah, service. I don't well, know. The problem I, think is they, it... I think they offer that, but the problem is, just like DirecTV or anybody else, they technically offer it to you, but they make it in a way that you would never really be able to do it. Like, well, I just want direct TV. I just want to watch my local channels and my local sports team. Well, you can't have the sports package unless you have at least the medium pack. You know what if I mean? If you like, pull Howard Stern, you're going to pull 10 right. other channels. Okay, well then... Forget that. I just want this. Well, you can't. Ha- I mean, they just make yeah, exactly. Like, no it matter what you do, they've got a circle they can talk in, and it, you're fucking not getting out of it. Like it's, that's, that's the way cable TV works. Right. Yeah. yeah. I pay a hundred dollars a month to no premium channels through Comcast, and out out of that, I pay sixteen dollars a month. Can't stop it if I want the cable, and it pays for sports. And I don't watch any sports on TV. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's they, a kind of deal. It's part of the deal. You want you want our cable? You got to pay. Curious kind of has it where you could get it for nine dollars a month, but then you really can't listen to shit. <laughs> so, you know, it's like, well, all I really care about is the NFL Network and the MLB Network. Well, if you have this package, you, it, it comes. Yeah. NFL Network, but not the MLB Network. <laughs> and you've got to take the sewing channel along with that. Right. You know what I mean? So it, it's just like they figured out exactly what people wanted uh, because obviously they must have some way of knowing what people listen to. Uh, I, it, I assume, you know, I, what can I tell you? And what's I, can not. I tell you that outside of the stuff that people pick up using the internet? Yeah. They don't know what people are listening they have no to. Clue. They never okay. did. But, I mean, yeah, that's true. But I, I'm i sure they have s- at least some idea, though, of what is popular, you know. I mean, I don't know Just that they would pay Howard Stern what they pay him if they didn't think people were listening to it, for example. You know, I think they be- at least have to strongly believe that the NFL channel that they have is popular or they would get rid of it because, I mean, they literally pay all these guys to talk football. 365 days a year you know so i mean but that's what they do they they like divvy it up in ways that when you look at it you're always like oh man that that's great package you know that would be cheap that's not bad and then there's always like that one channel where you're like god damn it you know it's not on there hey alex how do they uh how do they track you on on uh, the internet what do you mean here yeah, you said they know the people Period. that are on the internet what they watch, listen to. Well, well because know because the internet, um, right. uh, you actually can tell who's using up bandwidth. Yeah. Uh, whereas with mm-hmm. the satellite delivery, there's no way to figure out how many people are listening by satellite. Like, because that they don't is, know that exactly is, a, what that is one stream coming down from a from a satellite. Hello there, Adrian. And how are you this fine day? Mm-hmm. Then she hides. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's got a good dad. Uh, yeah. Got to figure out my lighting. Yeah. You got to figure out your lighting. <laughs> yes. You could probably you turn the ceiling your, off. Maybe the light will come back on. In yeah. your um, uh, wait a minute. I think you can actually go into your. Uh, what do you call it? Your uh, uh, settings. Settings for Zoom, and if you go up to video, uh, I believe is there brightness? No, there isn't brightness. No, no brightness. Mm. It this does say just, just for low light, though. Brightness, you know. Uh, but I think also you probably have in your camera on your. Uh, uh, 
Oh happened. my god, that was Tony's effect. Sorry. Oh, my mom's wallpaper. That didn't work. <laughs> your mom's yeah, old wallpaper. I still got swatches. I got to send you. That's all. That's all that's left of your mom's wallpaper. I got. I still got a little swatch here. I think somewhere now by by comic books. Really, really. really. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll, no. Anyways, I was saying uh, it, with uh, with uh, um, the signal that's coming off a satellite and people pick it up. They really don't know how many people are picking up that signal. Uh, whereas with the internet, you can tell how many people are listening. I can right now. I know that this is embarrassing, but right now on our YouTube uh, feed, uh, yeah. thirty-one people are watching the live feed. Yeah. So, you yeah. know, those are the ones that don't have an active VPN running. I don't know that if VPN changes that. I just all VPN is going to do is prevent me from knowing who they are. Right. Okay, but the VPN okay. I think still would not, you know, prevent it. But how many people did you have on Monday? I don't know. Uh, I um, what happens is that once we run the show, then people keep watching it, and it builds up and builds up and builds up. Just because I say there. are... 32 people watching live right now. The fact is people are going to look at that over the next two weeks or something like that. be a great deal more than that, of course. And Monday, well, Monday we had less listeners because we had 18 people on with us. <laughs> uh, but that was a lot of people, you know. But I don't know. Uh, the Monday show gets some pretty good numbers, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of the people on the Monday show say nothing during the whole show. That's right. Well, that's all right. And people like sometimes, that. Sometimes we, we wish that was like on this show, too. Ooh. <laughs> what, okay. what did you say? <laughs> but you know, back to serious. You know, I, I, I have serious, but the, the thing is, it's not how many channels I listen to. It's though that I'm in, I'm in my car so much, mm -hmm. you know. So there's so much listening hours in lives. Yeah, it's worth it. I mean... Same, yeah. same I don't know well, if you've ever run into the problem, but I remember once when I had a, uh, had a satellite ray car with a satellite radio in it. I was listening to Sirius XM because I was working for them at the time, and I, I went up to upstate California, and I went mm -hmm. through the Redwoods. You can't pick it up. Mm -hmm. because when you're in the hiding, trees, yeah. It's hiding the satellite signal, huh. the trees. Mm -hmm. So there yeah, are limitations. The what? Under the overpass, there's a, a that spot. There. There's a like a stoplight going onto the freeway, and when I'm under that, yeah, I can't, I can't get anything. Yeah, what happened was in New York, because of all the buildings, you couldn't pick up the satellites. Hmm. So you know what they did? They had yeah. lights on the buildings. Terrestrial. No. no. What did you say? They 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 uh, they added probably. Uh, Broadcast stations on the ground, terrestrial right. type station. They put broadcast. They put broadcast signals on the ground. Exactly. Yeah, right. They did mm -hmm. that in Atlanta too. I noticed. Yeah, I was yeah. going through there once. But New well, York would be impossible because you start driving through the canyons of New York and you don't have a straight shot up to a satellite. Right. So, but where you are in California, it's terrific. You know, it's fine. Yeah, that might have to get this. I've never listened to this serious. You know, really? You can stream it if you want, Alan. To get the app. Okay. Yeah, that's what I like too. I have the app, so if I'm taking a shower or doing something, like well, there's no way way of cheating Sirius XM and getting their programming without going through them. Yeah, you have to have the subscription to get the app. Correct. You can't get rid of the. You can't get rid of the. Uh, the subscription right. and have the well, app you, alone. You can get just I think the, you might be able to. I think you can get just I, the internet. I know it used to be that way, but I don't know if you can do it now. I, you can just get the app. Yeah, they they sell just an internet only. Oh trip, yeah, which is yeah. The okay because they used to not do that. It's not that much, you know, and I think you can get almost every basically get everything with it. Well, that case, because the app actually has the, more channels. By the way, by the way, yeah, in that case, any even if you're under trees, you should be able to get it. Yeah, you'd be able to get it fine now if you yeah, just put your Wi-Fi and you can Bluetooth it to a stereo if you want. 
Yeah, I'm that's have to what try I do. That. I'm going to have to try that this week. Yeah, but anyway, it's, uh, you know, I, what I what I was getting to me is that we have this whole problem with these uh, with these television uh, uh, s- systems like Hulu and so on. Mm-hmm. They're all raising their prices because they're all going broke. Now, can you imagine? Disney has like maybe a hundred and ten thousand subscribers, and they're going broke. Too. Yeah, I was watching well, the 110 X-Men. million, excuse yeah, me. Yeah, million, right. 110 million. And they're How going they broke. Raise it one dollar. Huh? They raise it one dollar. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, uh, Max is raising theirs, and they just fired a bunch of people, too. <laughs> and I'm not about ready to subscribe to anybody who's firing their people to make the bottom line uh, work. I mean, helps the stock price. Netflix is going to show a live doubleheader NFL games on yeah. Christmas Day this year that they paid the NFL, yeah. I'm sure, tens of millions of dollars for the rights to for a three-year contract. So probably, yeah. probably $100 million. But so, that, I mean, that's, yeah. There's, wow. I think, you know, I think they said they would raise theirs a few times, I think, in the last couple Well, of you years. know what's happening with uh, Netflix? So Tom Brady roast did so well. Mm-hmm. They're going to do a lot of roasts. And I don't know if you saw the Tom Brady roast, but it was terrible. Yeah. I wish they put the old roasts on. Remember the Dean Martin roast? They should just re-show those. Well, those weren't decent roasts. You, you can, you can watch, watch those, those on YouTube. Those, like that those were like... It, it, how racist you couldn't do, those were? You couldn't do a roast on television. I'm sorry. It has to be somewhere where language is not inhibited. Here's, here's, the, here's the cute thing about the Dean Martin roasts. Half the time, the people that were in the roast weren't even in the same room. Oh. Yeah. They had they, they were interviewing them in other rooms and stuff and then adding it all together and making it look like they were all in the same room. Sometimes. Sometimes. Oh, really? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. But they said they said they would take a, a Person to watch all the football games, it'll cost them eight hundred and fifty dollars, I think. Yeah, to get ah, Trump changed for somebody like you. Oh, so <laughs> Netflix is going to charge extra. Netflix, it's it's uh, who else? Amazon Prime. Amazon. Yeah, they're, they're doing Thursdays. They're not, but yeah, I'm they're not, not going to charge any extra for it. It's part right, of your subscription, but, but you know, there was there is a sports finance guy that basically sat down and looked at where all the games are at and everything. If you got YouTube TV with the Sunday ticket and then you subscribe to all the different apps that that carry NFL games exclusive here and there, you know, at the end of the year, it was just over and you paid for all of those for 12 months. At the end of the year, you'd spend about $1,100 oh my God. Uh, a year mm-hmm. to be able to have access to watch every single NFL game that was played without missing any of them, you know, yeah. every game. So the exclusive yeah. games, the local broadcast, what, you know, you know, through your YouTube TV, whatever. So, but I already have all those anyway, because they have all that shit. Everyone has shit all spread out. I mean, that's why they all do it. MLB's starting to do the same thing. You know, they just move their Sunday games to Roku channel now. And but it used to be on Peacock and all this other stuff. I mean, they're giving all these people like one game or two games a year. You know, it's going to get to the point. People will pay for it. It's going to get to the point where there'll be no sports events on uh, network television. Possible. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, that's possible because you know, like ESPN, basically Disney and all them. I mean, they pay Major League Baseball. They paid they paid Major League Baseball five hundred million dollars for X number of years. I can't remember how long it was to the to have the rights to Sunday night baseball game, which is one game a week, the All Star Game Home Run Derby, hmm. and I believe one round of the divisional playoffs in one of the leagues. Five hundred million dollars over X number of years, and they have an opt out clause after this year or next year, and they and they're doing what everyone does. They keep saying they're going to use it. And they're going to opt out because they want to renegotiate it and not pay as much, you yeah. know. And then, <clears throat> and that's wise because they're they want something that's more exclusive to them, you know. So, 
you know, because that's what they're going to want to do. They're going to try to want to renegotiate and move it to, like, not ESPN on DirecTV, but Disney Plus instead of ESPN, because that's the same company. But you can't watch it on ESPN. You have to watch it through your Disney Plus app, because then you have to subscribe mm -hmm. to the ESPN Disney Plus app, which is, like, through Hulu now or some shit. Whatever. It's so fucking confusing. But, I mean, they'll all renegotiate. That's what they're all trying to do. I mean, you know, but MLB doesn't want to because they want their 500 million, you know, they want the contract to keep going because it's a lot of, I think they were paying like $100 million a year over five years or something, yeah. but that's what they'll do. I mean, that's what they're all doing. Mm. They're just moving around to all the services so that you basically have to subscribe to, to all of them. Or every once in a while, you're going to miss something that you really want. It's no different than the thing we talked about earlier with the a la carte options with uh, your television or Sirius or whoever. Yeah, they'll offer it. You don't have to get all those things, but you'll have to miss one or two things that you really want. Are you willing to do that or are you not? You know, that that's the question. And some people will subscribe for a month, pay the $12, and then cancel. But a lot of people don't. I mean, if they're a business, even if you only subscribe for six months or whatever, they just keep taking your money. I mean, okay, quickly, let me just bring something else up since it has been happening this week. Has anybody been following the testimony of uh, Cohen? A little bit. I heard they were yelling in court. Was that true? Anything is possible. I'm not sure. You know, I mean, I follow you know like the coverage and what I kind of heard but i mean it's not televised and i'm certainly not going to read the transcript of what michael Cohen. well what it said. is they're all sitting there kind of repeating yeah. what's being sent to them from people in the courtroom as to yeah. what's going on i'm surprised what they haven't done they should get some actors to play the various parts yeah right Who that, home in central casting yeah yeah That'd be a good you know, i know that i would be willing to pay <laughs> like a little <laughs> fee not a lot of money but i would be willing to pay a little bit if they could maybe hire a sketch artist who can draw, and I can't draw <laughs> worth a shit. Yeah, they're not I, so stupid. like stick figures, I have trouble with. But I mean, if you, if like I could, if we could all just give like a dollar or something, and they could maybe hire one that hmm. looks like they're a sketch artist for a living, you know, not the guy that draws you and your wife at the fucking local festival or whatever. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> this guy looks like those things where you know. I'll draw you a caricature of you for a dollar. Yeah, when you're in Disney, we used to do that. Oh. It's just that you don't. It's, you know, it's, a photograph. it's New York City. <laughs> I mean, it's isn't that like where artists and stuff live? I mean, come on. There's got to be someone there that can draw better than that. <laughs> uh, it, um, it's, you know, <laughs> I mean, um, I'm wondering if Trump is going to testify like he said he was going to. Mm. No, his lawyer's no. not going to let him. He won't, but I hope he does. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's, it's I mean, a bad I, move. It's a bad move. He's not going to do that. If he what does, he, he's dead in the water. Yeah. He also what thinks he's going to do. But that? you know, I mean, the jury has the right, and I would probably say, and this is not just for Trump, but I would probably say it if I were on a jury as well. I mean, the jury also though has the right to say if this guy is so innocent. Why would he not testify? Yeah. All these people lined up and said all these things, and he sat over there, and he shook his head, and he grumbled and all <clears> that, <throat> but he was not willing to get on the stand and <clears throat> say this oh, is Oh, that's happened. what he himself said before the yeah. trial even started. Right. He says, I'm so innocent, I'll testify. Yeah. Right. And you, look, you don't have to do that. I'm, I'm, it's within your right. I mean, and I'm not arguing that, but it's within the juror's right to weigh whatever evidence they would like to make up their mind. You're the juror. <laughs> And doesn't I mean, he, if I were the juror, I would question that. Doesn't he give up his Fifth Amendment rights if he agrees to uh, testify? Well, basically, yes, because yeah. everything that he testifies to, he then is subject to the cross. He can't just get right. up there and only tell his yeah. side and his lawyer and then it's done. Right. Yeah, He yeah. has to be cross-examined by the prosecution. This is and, why in that setting, when you're asked a question, you must answer it. I'm saying part of me is saying he won't. Uh, and part of me is saying he will because he he calls his own shots and yeah. he's a fucking moron okay and he's an egotist and he probably feels oh, I can get up on the stand 
and all America will know I'm innocent. The only thing it's not going to happen is it's not being televised, Donald. I wish they had a camera in there, really. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, this is bigger than the O.J. Simpson trial for murder. The only no, missing is the Bronco. Really. Nothing, but nothing's bigger than the, the O.J. Simpson <laughs> trial. That was. I mean, that was like surreal. And right? you know, honestly, there's a few more trials of his coming up that are a far <laughs> greater importance and far greater consequence than this one you know so uh i mean this one has some of the salaciousness to it or whatever but it's not the most important one that i think yeah but this is the one he could go to jail for well i mean really could go to jail for Mm -hmm. i mean any crime come usually comes with jail can come with jail time yeah any criminal crime yep well, you know, today, or at least uh, the ones I've seen him charged with. I mean, look, to, people go to jail for leaking classified documents well, all the today fucking time. It was announced, today it was announced that uh, that they're going to have a debate. Seriously. Uh, and Seriously. Uh, what? What did you say? Keep telling, <laughs> stop messing around. So yeah. Well, anyway, they keep cool. saying bad words. So okay. they have a Ooh. a uh, um, uh, they're going to have a debate. And Mitt Romney said oh. today that he felt that it would be in um, Joe Biden. Biden's best interest to pardon Donald Trump. Oh. Mitt Romney? Frog- yeah, he said that. Me frog legs. And I used to like Romney. Why would he no, say that? No, but his feeling was that he would take some of the, uh, the sting out of the whole thing. You know, hmm. Biden would be the bigger man or something yeah, like Biden, that. Well, we Biden's the bigger man. Nixon, we wouldn't have this mess now. You know, because uh, just wouldn't think they could get away with shit. Yeah, we you know, know, I would say. Then I started you know to think them? about it, and the fact is that three the three other trials have been yeah. held off. Okay, and probably will not happen before the fall uh, and after the election. Okay. Meanwhile, the only trial that's in play. Biden can't pardon him from, which is this state uh, yeah. trial. But I mean, my only issue with that is pretty much all the time, for sure, pardons go to people and come to people with contrition and who have already sacrificed something. In other words, Nixon was pardoned, and I know he didn't go to jail, but Nixon gave stuff up. He yeah. gave up the presidency of the United States and was outcasted into the woods as a banished wanderer, right? You know what I'm saying? He had a personal cost. I'm not saying he lived on the street in a box, but I'm just, he sacrificed and gave something up and pretty much kept his mouth shut about it after that, too. Mm -hmm. Trump is doing none of those things. It will, he, if you do that, he stands to lose nothing and only gain. And he's never said I'm sorry or anything well, near that. I just thought it was before. a pretty, pretty kind of stupid idea on Romney's yeah. part, right? Because to begin uh, with, the one trial that's going and it is in play, he could not pardon him from that. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, they're very, yeah. I mean, you know, when they pardon people who were in for drug offenses and all those kinds of things, mm-hmm. those are people who who generally got way harsher punishment than the crime because a judge was making a point or a prosecutor or because of some horse shit or whatever. And those people are saying, <clears throat> right, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. If you give me a new life, I'll be a productive citizen of this country. Mm-hmm. Trump isn't saying I want to be a productive citizen. No. He's basically saying I want everything I want, and if not, you're going to get a war. Yeah, I mean, that, that's not the kind of person you want to let off the hook. Yeah. Anyway, I got the theme playing here. I've been out of <laughs> sync pretty much for this whole show so people out there if you're bothered by it I don't by the way Alex happens. Bennett is alive and well yeah, alive and well that's mm-hmm. good uh, Josh good seeing you tonight we'll see you again tomorrow night I guess huh? yeah yeah, yeah. We should. see we, we, we we're getting mid- weird days now yeah uh, I'll write it down yeah uh, Charlie good talking to you tonight oh. been a little quiet tonight Kind of a little tired, yeah. Drooping out there, uh, but that's okay. It's fine. We know you work hard at that uh, at being a, a baseball. What is it? Softball refereeing is what it is. Softball, yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, thank you very much, Brian. Appreciate it. And tell Adrian and I appreciate her participation as well. Don't, please don't encourage her. Oh, the, well, <laughs> there she is. See? Uh, and uh, Scott Boddicker, good having you here. You know, it's like the old days. Jeff, you haven't said a word Ooh. tonight, but, yeah, eh, eh, you know. Uh, and Alan, thank you. And thank you to Kevin. And thanks to Tony for being with us tonight. Everybody give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, folks. There's the citizen panel. Now I'm in sync again, see? I don't know why that happens. I, I have no idea. But anyway, it doesn't matter. We'll see you again. Well, we've got uh, Amy. She's next, right over the same station. She'll be... Uh, uh, taking your calls on Skype at, at GabNet Live. I'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.